Hello friends, my name is Beth Korth and I'm the Art Education Coordinator and Visitor Center Manager here at Tippett Rice Art Center, located in Fishtail, Montana. Today, I'm here under Xylem by architect Francis Carre, who built this pavilion entirely inspired by nature, especially looking at trees. As you can see, the entire pavilion is built from sustainably harvested logs. Today, we'll be inspired by nature in our own way as we learn a cloth dyeing technique called batik. Let's go down to the Daydream Schoolhouse and learn how. Now for authentic batik dyeing, you'd usually use a wax resist, but today we're gonna to do a slightly different method. We're going to take 100% cotton cloth, a large paintbrush, Elmer's glue is our resist, and acrylic paint diluted with one part water to part paint, as well as a table covering. As you start your project, you're gonna to wanna to spread out your fabric onto your table and make sure that your table covering is underneath. Now you're gonna start with just your Elmer's glue as your resist. Today I want you to think about something outside in nature. I think I wanna draw something a little bit inspired by nature, but also a lot of fun. So I'm gonna draw a couple of flowers and also some leaves. I'm making them a little cartoony because I also think they're a little fun and goofy. It doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be exactly like what I saw. It's more of just an inspiration. Once you have your glue drawing just the way you'd like, you need to leave it out to dry. I usually would leave it out for a whole night, but if you leave it out in the hot sun outside, it'll probably only take a couple hours. Just make sure it's completely dry before you move to the next step. Once your glue is completely dry, you can add your paint. Remember, we're taking acrylic paint and diluting it with water, meaning as much paint as you put in your cup, that's how much water you'd like to add. I'm using a couple of different colors here just to make it as bright and colorful as I'd like, and you can go ahead and start painting. You can do big swatches of paint here and there. Remember, you don't have to worry so much about where your lines are because that glue is the resist between what's holding the color of your fabric and what is dyeing the fabric. Once you've painted your fabric completely, you'll need to leave it out to dry. Remember, the longer you let it dry, the better that stain is gonna hold on to the fabric. On a nice sunny day like today, it'll probably dry fully in just a couple of hours. Once you are done painting and you've left it out to dry completely, now you're ready to rinse. Remember, you wanna rinse this in a sink with hot water. You might need to ask an adult for a little bit of help. As you're rinsing it, you're gonna notice a lot of that dye and that paint rinsing away from your fabric, but you're also gonna feel on your lines so that that glue's gonna start getting soft and slimy as it starts to release. You're gonna know that you've fully rinsed out your batik fabric once you reveal those nice white lines onto your fabric and your water runs clear instead of with the colors of your dye. Once you're all done rinsing, you can leave it out to dry completely, and then you'll have a product pretty similar to this. As you can see in this fully dried batik piece, you can see the nice crisp white lines where that glue resist used to be, and that the, the colors have diluted a little bit, but still remain fairly bright. This is a fun thing to take on. You can use it as a table covering. You can wrap a gift with it. Really, the options are limitless. We just hope that you had a lot of fun today and you go and have fun out there. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out our YouTube channel. For more information about Tippet Rise Art Center, please visit www.tippetrise.org.